This project included all the 12th grade IB biology students, higher and standard level students. Um, Ms. Smith and I, Emily and I, were working on uh, our immunity concepts and topics and started talking about what to do and we decided to go ahead and have these students develop some sort of a research project. And so we wanted to provide an opportunity for the kids to explore using various lenses, you know, the, the global implications of Ebola. Um, but we also wanted them to <clears throat> kind of see the bigger picture and understand just how interconnected everything is. Well, I used to live in Zaire, which is now Congo, so that's Central Africa, and I used to live in Ghana, so I'm always interested in what's going on in those countries. So I've been following the Ebola outbreak very closely. I would imagine it probably starts out as flu symptoms of some sort, high fever, you know, joint ache, fever gets worse and worse. The last symptom, and perhaps the most telling and most important one, is the viral hemorrhagic fever, which causes internal organs to start bleeding. When this happens, you can bleed from any orifice in your body. My understanding is that it originated in the Congo and uh, possibly from interaction with an infected primate, like a monkey of some kind. The research indicates that fruit bats are likely the host of the e Ebola virus. The virus affects humans as well as other primates, such as chimpanzees, gorillas, and monkeys. When infection of the virus does occur in the human body, it can be spread and transmitted to other humans through direct contact of broken skin or mucous membranes with blood or other body fluids through objects that have been contaminated with the virus, such as needles and syringes. Also, although Ebola cannot be spread by air, water, or food in Africa, it is possible that Ebola may have been spread as a result of handling bushmeat and infected bats. I have a student who often brings to the class connections that he naturally sees, and I've noticed that with our students, that they naturally see connections with their other classes. And from that, I thought, wouldn't it be great to sort of encourage that, you know, looking at a particular infectious disease, not through just stro solely the, the scope of biology, of virology, but this more global, bigger piece. I think in some ways it helps us just see how difficult the topic, yeah. you know, just infectious disease as a whole, but then when you've got one like this, where it historically is connected to the economic country that can't, doesn't have the public health. We decided to have the students select which area that they would be interested in researching. So it became an open-ended project where we actually de-emphasized the science and encouraged social, political, um, and the other area that they would be interested in, in researching. Um, came up with a list of what we thought would be something that they would want to or be encouraged to research and then let them go ahead and do that. It kind of serves as like a, a visual, kind of a visual to demonstrate how, like if you like want to pull out like one issue, we were going to end up um, facing all the others as well. According to the World Health Organization, the cost of the Ebola virus outbreak totals around $1 billion. Many developing countries such as Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea face economic challenges such as poor health care, malnutrition, poor access to water, and lack of facilities. What I noticed while they were working in their groups is their, at that point, it still hadn't, the, the, the gentleman hadn't come to the United States. It hadn't been recorded that there was somebody in the U.S. with with the disease, so their their emotions were very sensitive, um, very empathetic to the struggles, and I think that comes across in a lot of their presentations as you uh, as we see them. Many countries throughout Africa, specifically Sierra Leone and Uganda, have strict cultural rituals regarding the deaths of loved ones. For example, in Sierra Leone and many other West African countries, washing, kissing, and touching the corpse is custom to ensure that the spirit is passed on to the afterlife. Well, a lot of countries in West Africa have similar uh, burial traditions, so it's kind of custom to wash the body after um, the person has passed. And um, typically it's a female family member, either the daughter or the sister of the deceased, um, and then they wash the body, and um, I think like the 
family has to kiss the body and or give it like a loving touch before they send the body onto the afterlife or the spirit onto the afterlife. And that's like a huge component of like the mourning process because a lot of um, like specifically in Sierra Leone and Uganda, a lot of people feel that if they are prevented from touching the body, then they're not doing their job as the family of their loved one to send them on. Women account for 55 to 60 percent of the disease in the current epidemic in Liberia, Guinea, and Sierra Leone. Women also constitute a large section of the health workers and are on the front lines of the crisis. They serve, they serve roles as traditional birth attendants, nurses, cleaners, and laundry workers in the hospitals where there is a greater risk of exposure. But as the videos were completed, and we now have moved on to you know, where we are today in the, in, with the Ebola here in, in the States and, what, and the concern and almost the frenzy that's going on. They come in almost daily. Hey, did you hear you know, what the latest was in the news? So on, on, you know, we're doing current events in the class while also reinforcing what they need to know for the science, for the IV biology. En ce moment, je, je n'y pense pas à tous les jours ni à toutes les minutes, mais euh, une grande lectrice de Camus et de La Peste, on voit très bien que ce genre de truc peut arriver euh, plus rapidement qu'on pense. Et le fait que ça, ça soit, euh, ça, comment je pourrais dire, ça a traversé l'océan assez rapidement et que là, il y a déjà plusieurs infections au pays, ben, c'est pas, euh, pas sûr que ça n'arrivera pas. When, uh, when Ms. Mack and Nurse Jean and I sat down to think about how we could kind of hash out the details of this particular project, we considered uh, various, um, various ways of showing what they were researching. And one of the ideas that came about was to put together a concept map uh, to show what the students were you know, researching from the various perspectives. You know, some of the students take more than one IB course, so the geo students uh, or the econ students could explore more than just the biology of uh, the Ebola virus. And, and so in order to get the school involved and the community involved, we thought that using the library space to display and for the students to work on this concept map would provide an opportunity for other students to, you know, kind of wandering through the library, to see what the grade 12s were working on. The Ebola crisis will never get better and will only get worse unless the whole world puts in the effort to make it better.